Today I want to talk about the product of inertia. The product of inertia is kind of like a moment of inertia that we've just done, Ix or Iy, except here instead of having x squared or y squared, the product of inertia is defined as the integral of xy dA. The difference, one of the big differences between this and the moments of inertia is that a moment of inertia is always positive. You've got x squared in your integral, and you've got, even in the parallel axis theorem, d squared times a. So nothing that's ever there is going to be zero or negative. But this one, because you've got x, y, and they're not squared, these can be zero, greater than zero, less than zero, either way. In general, what is a moment of inertia? You're talking about, in, in a moment of inertia, you have a beam that's bending like this. You have an axis of rotation. It's a cross-sectional property. So we say that it is easier to bend the ruler this way than it is to bend it crosswise because more of the material is farther away from this axis than it is away from this axis. So when we talk about bending like this, basic beam theory says as you bend this, any cross section that you would take out of the middle, any, any chunk right here cut out of the middle here, if it starts flat, ends up flat. But sometimes we have non-symmetric cross-sections. So if you have an asymmetric cross-section where you have something like an L-beam, when you bend this, think about how this would work. The flat part will want to have it be easier to bend about this axis. But the back part would find that much harder. So you have competing problems. You've got one, that, one part that wants to bend easily and the other part that wants to not bend easily. If you take an L out of the middle of this beam, even if it started flat, it might not end up flat. So that's what you're talking about when you're talking about products of inertia. It only comes into play when you're talking about beam bending with asymmetric cross-sections. Anytime you have a cross-section that is symmetric about either the x or y axis, you can bend it about the x-axis or the y-axis, and cross-sectional planes remain plane. So how do you find what the product of inertia is? You can integrate it just like before, except this is usually done with a double integral instead of a straight. So if you're going to integrate it, it's a straight integral. Composite bodies are a little bit more common. You'll see that. That's what we're going to do. The parallel axis theorem here says Ixy is Ixy plus A dx dy, where those are the two distances from the axis. So how does this actually work with composite bodies? This is the same thing I just had up there, where Ixy, this part, is the product of inertia of any individual one of your composite bodies about its own centroidal axis. Now that's the part that's generally zero. Or you can look it up in a chart if you have some other basic shape. dx and dy are the distance from the x and y axes to each individual part centroid. A is the area, and then you put this in this chart where you've got ixy, dx, dy, a, and then the sum of them. All you've got to do is add up this last column. So if we look at an example, this is the kind of problem you're going to end up with. This is an asymmetric beam that we just looked at. If I want to find Ixy about the centroidal axis of these things, the first thing you have to do is find the centroid of that thing. So this is the chart we had before. We have x bar, y bar, a, x bar, a, and y bar, a. These are with respect to some axis that you started with. So I put my axis at the lower left-hand corner and said x and y bar will be measured from this lower left-hand corner for each of my pieces. A is just the area of each piece. And that gives me the, the centroid location with respect to that lower left-hand corner. And then, like we've done before, what I want to do is take and move those ac my axes to this, this point. Now, when I go to fill out the chart for Ixy, these are zero because I had it broken up into two rectangles. Each of them are zero, um, symmetric about their own centroidal x or y axes. dx is the distance between this x-axis and each of the, well, dx is going to be the distance between the y, this, this distance, the x distance between that point and this line, or this point and that line. dy is the other two. So you've got, for example, 1.1667 minus 1 gives you this dx. Notice that this is a negative number. That 
point is left and down. So dx and dy are both negative. dy is positive for 1 and negative for 1, like this. There's your a. This is what I'm going to do if I add up those last couple. So a couple things to remember. If you have a, a piece, an individual part, that is symmetric about its own cross-section, these are zero. And then these are measured between the centroid of each shape and the new centroidal axes. So that's how you find a product of inertia, most commonly.